Hi guys, it's Kath. Today we're going to build this miniature bookstore dollhouse that also looks like a volume of vintage leather bound books. We'll be using some very simple supplies for this project. This is also a super easy tutorial on how to turn ordinary craft foam into faux leather. Let's get started. The first thing we need is the base of this dollhouse. For that, I cut a 6 inch by 8 inch rectangle. I'm just using 1 8 inch thick craft plywood here. Since this wood is already 6 inches wide, I only need to make one cut. Just run your X-Acto blade down the wood on both sides several times and snap the excess off. Next, we'll knead the walls. I grab a chipboard sheet which is kind of like very thick cardstock. Cut out a 6 inch by 8.5 inch rectangle for the side wall. We'll need two of these for the two side walls. Before we glue these in place, we also need a front wall. Cut out an 8 inch by 8.5 inch rectangle for more chipboard. Cut a 2.5 by 6.5 inch rectangle on the right hand side for the door and a 3.25 three and by 3.75 three and three inch rectangle on the left side for the window. I use ordinary wood glue to position these pieces in place. Here is the structure all complete. It's super simple. Now we're ready for the fun step of turning craft foam into leather. The craft foam I'm using is 3mm thick and has a sticky backing. I first cut out a 6 inch by 8.5 inch rectangle, the same size as the side wall. To add some texture, I evolved some aluminum foil and press it into the foam. It leaves dents and scratches in the foam that'll help with the aged look. For the color, I brushed burnt sienna acrylic paint all across the surface. Paint absorbs into the foam, so you'll need to add a few layers. Once that's dry, I take some burnt umber, which is a very dark brown paint. Dry brush it lightly across the surface for some texture. Peel off the paper backing and stick it onto the outer side wall. This will be our book cover. Now we need some book spines. For that, I'll be using these giant craft sticks. They're one and a quarter inches wide. The stick needs to be eight and a half inches long, so I cut the rounded ends off. Lean the stick against the front of the bookstore. As you can see, it covers up a portion of the doorway, so we need to trace the outline and cut it out. Now you just need a piece of faux leather in the same shape. Stick it onto the craft stick. Paint the exposed wood and glue this piece to the storefront. Repeat this process until the entire front is covered. Add a second 6 inch by 8.5 inch rectangle for the back book cover. Then add on the final book spine. Let's create some detail to really make these look like books. An easy way to add a look of stitching to this foam is with a saw blade. Just press the blade into the foam and look at the effect it creates. I add this all around the perimeter of the cover and use metallic gold paint to really make it stand out. Go slow here. Also add some bands of gold on the spine. These details take time, but add so much to the final result. While that dries, let's build the door frame. I'll be using these thick 1 quarter inch wide coffee stirs for that. Cut out two 6.5 inch lengths and two 2.5 inch lengths. Glue these pieces together in this formation. Then take some thin craft matchsticks and glue them inside the perimeter of the top opening. This will be the frame for a small window. Before we add in the glass, paint the entire frame black. Cut out 2.5 by 1 inch rectangle from recycled plastic packaging and scratch it up a bit. Then place this piece into the frame. Build another matchstick frame of the same size, paint it black, and place it on top. 
This will hold the plastic in place. Now just glue the frame into the doorway opening. Let's use the same steps to create a window. With more coffee stirrers, cut out two 3 and 3 fourths inch lengths and two 3 inch lengths. Glue them together into a rectangle. Then take some thin coffee stirrers and frame the interior perimeter. This will be the frame for the glass. Paint the frame black. Here is a 3.5 half by 3 inch rectangle piece of plastic for the glass. This is optional, but I write bookstore onto the plastic with a sharpie as an outline. Then with some white nail polish and a toothpick, slowly fill in the outline. Once it's dry, I use rubbing alcohol to remove the sharpie ink. Place this piece inside the window frame and add some painted coffee stirrers to the top. Now you can install the window into the opening on the storefront. The final structural piece we need is the actual door. For that, I'll be using this quarter inch thick square dowel. Using a miter saw, cut two 5 inch lengths and three 2 inch lengths. First, glue the two long pieces and two of the short pieces together to form a rectangle. Then add the final short length one and a quarter inches above the bottom. Paint the entire frame black. To cover up the bottom opening, I cut a two inch length from a giant craft stick and position it inside. Frame the inner perimeter with matchsticks and paint it black. Let's install the door into the frame. I'll be using these adorable miniature dollhouse hinges. Cut two grooves one third of an inch apart along the right side of the door. Then carve that piece out with a utility knife. I'll be using Gorilla Glue to hold the hinges in place because it's super strong. Glue one side of the hinges to the door and the other side to the door frame. Sorry for the blurriness here. Paint some more coffee stirrers black and cut out two three and a quarter inch pieces. Position them vertically inside a door opening. Cut a three and a quarter by two inch piece of plastic and place it inside a door as a glass. Cut two more three and a quarter inch lengths and two one and three fourths inch lengths of coffee stirrers to finish the interior frame. Let's add some final details to finish the exterior. Add some additional gold bands on the spines. Then use crimson red paint to fill in the band between the gold. Once that's dry, you can add some symbols. An easy way to paint those on is with the outer rim of some small stickers. I just peel off the outer edges of a star sticker and use that as my stencil. Then all you need to do is dab the gold paint on. I take a toothpick and add dots all along the band and some around the stars. This is optional, but I decided to add some more coffee stirrers around the door to really make the frame stand out. For a door number, I use the same technique that I did for the window, only this time it's with black nail polish. As a final accessory, I find an image of a closed open door sign. Copy from Google Images and shrink it down. Print it and cut it out. Then glue the images onto a thin piece of cardstock. Put your hole into each top corner with a needle and thread a piece of string through each one. Tie the pieces from both sides together. Make sure to add a toothpick before tightening the knot. Cut out a tiny knot from the toothpick. Then simply glue that knot to the top of the door frame. Next time, I'll show you how to build the interior of this store with some bookshelves and fill it with all your favorite books. This project was so much fun to make and I love that it's customizable. Your volume of books can be Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, or any other series that you love. 
This will also make a great gift for any book lover in your life. I hope you guys liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and make sure to subscribe for more. I'll see you next time. Bye!